want to talk about your company, man. First of all, what's your name? I'm Derek Wyback, one of the owners here, one of the partners at, uh, at Eliel. What does Eliel stand for? So Eliel is uh, my partner Ryan's middle name. And when we were going through the whole naming process, we had a branding firm that was uh, trying to come up with names for us. And they had all these kind of generic cycling sounding names that like just didn't mean anything. And I was looking through GQ and like all these other um, magazines and it was like all the brands that we aspire to be were all designer brands, right? And they're all named after the designer, right? Pick a pick a name, Hugo Boss, Donna Corinne, you know, all that stuff. And I was like, well, my, my name's useless. I'm like, Ryan, what's your middle name? He's like, Eliel or Eliel. Um, I was like, oh, dude, let's write that down on the board. And we just kept coming back to it. And the branding firm came up with a, um, a pretty cool logo. And Lucy translated, we kind of consider it to be like the best of the best. And we wanted it to be named after, you know, the main owner. So, you know, it's got some story behind it, has some heritage, personal connection to the brand. It's not just some random name. It's, you know, the owner's middle name. How did you two guys come together to make this company? Both of our daughters are best friends. He's got two daughters and, and so do I. And the, the four of them are like a band. So, you know, we were always hanging out. And then when Ryan sold his half of Sockeye, we started chit-chatting. And um, he's like, look, you know, I've, I've got a little bit of money to invest. I want to, you know, start something new. What do you, what do you think? And um, so we were kind of, you know, throwing around some ideas. And look, dude, we don't have any business doing, we don't know distribution, but we know apparel. Ryan's super picky about what he wears. Um, he's really into quality and style. And I had, we both had contacts from that custom industry. And I was like, we could do something here. So um, Ryan was over in Europe and Asia looking at different factories. We were down in Mexico and we just decided, you know what, we're gonna do it right here. It's all gonna be made in California, high quality. And we, it had to be high quality from the start because we were gonna have to charge more for the, um, you know, the labor rates. And we wanted to you know, control 100% of it. So we just bit the bullet, got the machines and got going. I, I say, I want to make a kit for my brand and I kind of like to have fruit on it. And yeah. then all of a sudden you produce this amazing, high quality, right, right. vibrant, beautiful work of art. Right. What's in the middle of that? Well, you know what you, know what you started with, right? You started with um, an idea, a concept, and you laid down what you thought the direction should be, right? And then we get a vibe for what you want to do. And then basically what we try and do here is help clean up the design a little bit so it's vibrant you know a lot of people try and fit all these little details in but the problem is that um, at 20 to 30 miles per hour it doesn't show up on the road right you're a, you're a basically a moving target you're a visible billboard so we want it to be um, classic in design um, we don't want it to stray too far from like what people would consider like a cycling outfit we just you know try and apply you know general general rules like cycling classic cycling look with a little bit of our colors and um, you know just basic design elements you know we you know within that portfolio of gear that they're going to buy you know usually a team is getting you know jerseys bibs skin suits some accessories and whatnot but within those seven or eight pieces we can have multiple looks you can have the skin suit um, be a completely you know a little bit more outrageous because it's usually just race day type of stuff so then you're getting a lot more bang for your buck um, you know, within those seven pieces, instead of everything having the same design across the board, you know, a blue jersey, a blue bib, a blue um, yada, yada, yada. So we try and mix it up a little bit to give them like, oh yeah, dude, I get like, I get to wear my skin suit today. It's something completely new. It's not just a skin suit version of my jersey and bibs. So design is done. They approve. It looks awesome. How does it go from paper to right to right. reality man uh, it's a multiple step process so even before the client sees their concepts it goes through kind of a background check uh, we call it like a pre-flight to make sure that what the concept artist has created um, can be printed can be manufactured um, in terms of logo placements you know cross seaming we try not to go across the different seams although we can it, um, it adds another layer of extra time for the artist because they've got to like go through every size. So we basically size grade every, every piece. So you're, back in the day it used to be you'd get like one layout and the company would make everything, everything fit like an extra small. By the time you got to an extra large or double extra large, you had these small logos on like a big guy and all this extra space around it, right? Well, we size grade every piece so that 
the small looks like the medium looks like the large and everything is um, perfect so it goes through a process in the background we send it to the client a couple edits and then from there then we have production artists that basically lay that out you know they take that concept art and they're laying it out on every every single piece but we've created a system internally where we can take those concepts and it basically goes right to production make a better quality product it came down to the ingredients so it's the fabrics you know everything we do is um, it's made with either Italian or some like super Gucci uh, Swiss fabrics we laser cut everything so that the fit is precise every time across the board and then our inks our inks and our paper where a lot of people those are some of the most expensive items that go into the uh, or ingredients that go into our clothing um, you know a bottle of ink is like 150 bucks um, the papers have like a little extra, uh, it's like a tackiness to them, so that when it, when the uh, when it's pressing, it doesn't slide, and the um, the ink penetrates the um, the fabric, you know, perfectly. So you get these vibrant colors that are never going to wash out. They're never going to fade, you know. But it's all it's we're just using more expensive ingredients than most people. You know, they want to like pump it out. They want to get it out fast. And custom clothing is very intensive. And we said, you know what, we're just going to make it the best we possibly can, and We'll figure out the pricing later you know we wanted to make stuff that we loved and then you know figure out the business stuff later so but we knew it was going to be you know more expensive for the fabrics more expensive for the labor um, but we knew that there was a market out there that wanted premium gear and they were willing to pay you know 10 20 percent more visually it's really neat to see the laser cutting cutter right. doing its thing but how necessary is the laser cutter what why is that like a normal thing? Is that how all companies use? Or no, it's becoming a little bit more common. Um, and we debated, there's a couple different methods to um, that production process where you can cut pieces first and then print them. But there's some, uh, some human error that can come into play there because you're basically, um, you'll see videos online of like people like putting pieces of fabric down on the paper as it goes into the press. Well, with that, you have some, you have some margin of error, right? So um you've got that to consider the biggest thing for us with the laser cutter was um, not only the precision but we were able to bring a mature product to market faster so since we do all the production all the development right here that laser cutter allowed us to develop a jersey ryan would go out and test it you know ride for six seven hours um you know, along with the bibs or whatever else, and then we'd come back the next day and whatever adjustments we wanted to make, we could do it right there in the computer and produce another one within hours. So that initial jersey, our Rincon jersey and our Mavericks jerseys, um, they went through multiple, multiple iterations before they even, you know, saw the marketplace. Um, and then we continued to develop it. And it took us about, oh man, maybe a year to a year and a half to really nail down our Rincon jersey. Luckily, our bibs, we, um, we nailed down within the first couple um, first couple shots but our jerseys went through multiple revisions to make sure like you know there was no zipper ripple and you know the right height of the of the collar and the length and the sleeve length and all that stuff so what do you do how do you put it how do you how do you take the panels and connect it to make a, a bibs yeah, or a jersey exactly so what they do is um, you know, you've got multiple pieces that come in for like, even like a jersey, right? You've got, um, you know, our, our sleeves are different than the body. So that's an added step, right? So what you do is you cut all that stuff and then you have to bundle it up and then it goes into the sewing. And we basically have experts from the different techniques or different processes, right? We have experts from the printing, experts from uh, the sewing process. And, and then they have managers that kind of, you know, work that whole flow. So it's all about, um, you know, the efficiency, how fast you can do it, right? How many per minute. So, um, yeah, so once all those pieces are cut, then they're bundled up and then they move through the process in, in multiple different, you know, areas. So, you know, it could be the sleeves first. Um, maybe we're sewing, sewing on our little labels. You know, we have a, um, our woven labels that you'll find on the back of the shorts or on the uh, chest or the, the sleeve. So there's all these little steps to, you know, to make it work out. And once it comes out of sewing, then we have um, Josefina, who's kind of our, our, our stopper. She basically checks over everything before it goes out. They trim up every little piece because there's all these little threads that'll be hanging off. So they'll, um, they've got these little trimming scissors. They'll clean them up, 
make sure everything looks good, and um, our return rate is very, very um, low. It's like exceptionally low in terms of um, you know defects and stuff like that. So we catch it before it goes out the door, and uh, and then the customer you know super stoked when they get their gear. And even even after that, part of the the plan behind the studio and the factory being right here is that we would offer a, a higher level of service. So, you know, if a lot of our competitors, their factories are overseas. So if something happens to their gear, like a zipper blows out or a seam comes undone, they basically tell their clients, so oh, just go find a local seamstress and they'll fix it for you. Well, we basically send our clients a, a shipping label. We take care of the shipping, it comes back a couple days later, we fix it, we send it back out, no charge of the client. So we stand behind our products that way too. Like our brand is, is, is meant to represent who we are, like the gear that we want to ride in, in terms of design, in terms of the quality, in terms of the level of service that we give to people. So when people do come on board, um, you know, we take it personally.